Christmas 1996 started a lifelong love for me that has never wavered even 25 years later. I had a Sega Mega Drive, or Genesis, if you're American, and I have fond memories of playing Streets of Rage, Golden Axe, Street Fighter 2, and of course, Sonic 1 and 2. But it was Christmas 1996 that truly cemented my love of gaming and turned me into a gamer. That Christmas, I got a PlayStation 1. Not the curved PS1, but the original beautiful grey block of joy. Bundled with that PlayStation, besides the demo disc that had trailers for upcoming games like Devil May Cry, Ridge Racer and Gran Turismo, was the subject of today's video. Crash Bandicoot. Hello and welcome to Amalgam Mingle. My name's Craig and today, on the 25th anniversary of Crash's first release, I'm going to look back on the franchise and what it means to me. But before we get into that, any previous Crash videos we've done will be linked below, and any future videos we do, which I do have planned, hi future Craig, will also be linked below, so you have a comprehensive list of all things Crash. With that out of the way, let's get on with it. Firing up the PlayStation and hearing one of the greatest sounds of all time, I sat down to play the game. Like I said, Crash Bandicoot was the first PlayStation game I ever played and I fell instantly in love with it, even if it is still one of the hardest games I've ever played. Confession time. I have never beaten the original Crash game. Legitimately. I've always had to use the master password. Despite its infuriatingly simple yet precise level design and the fact that I could barely play the levels, for context I was only 6 years old, I fell in love with everyone's favourite dim-witted marsupial on his journey to stop Dr. Neo Cortex and his minions. I love the level design, the different locales from Insanity Beach to the Indiana Jones style boulders to Temple of Darkness, Sunset Vista and of course the High Road. There was a degree of variety I had never seen before. I know previous games from the Sega Mega Drive Genesis era did have variety too, but I'm talking more 2D to 3D. I had never played a game that did that before. Now I know some of you might be thinking of Mario 64, but I never had an N64. I was never a Nintendo kid growing up, and I've never had a connection to Nintendo games. This is just based on my own experiences. So I don't have that comparison, sorry to say. But back to Crash. I also loved and hated the boss battles in equal measure, from Papu Papu to Ripper Roo's maniacal laugh that was sadly not as insane in the Insane trilogy. <laughs> to Pinstripe, Koala Kong, Dr. Brio and Cortex himself. Another thing I love about Crash is the music, from the iconic opening notes to Insanity Beach, the crazy theme of Hogwild, to the industrial sounds of the machinery levels and the rocky guitar of the Brio bonus levels. This game also has another reason for having a special place in my heart. My dad was not a gamer, but he would sometimes watch me, and later my younger brother, play certain games, and for whatever reason, Crash caught his eye. And when I say Crash caught his eye, I mean one specific level. Hogwild. I don't know what it was about this level, but he loved it. Whenever I didn't play the game, he would ask to. So I set him up with a master password so he had 99 lives, and he would play it pretty much until he got bored or had his fill. Sadly, he passed away in 2008, but if he was still here, he probably would have asked me to do the same with the Insane Trilogy. But my god, is this game hard, especially if you're a completionist. I have a lot of respect for anyone that has managed to beat this game legitimately 100%. If you've only played the Insane Trilogy version of Crash Bandicoot 1, let me explain why Crash is both loved and hated in equal measure. The aim of each level is to smash every single box in the game to get the gem. Some of these levels can be done relatively easy and some not so much. Some levels require you to not die to reach the end and get a colour gem, which unlocks bonus paths previously hidden. But the problem is that not only are these levels hard, but some of the bonus levels are downright devious with the precise platforming required. And if you fail the bonus level, you cannot replay it like in the Insane Trilogy. So you have to quit the level and try again ad nauseum until you get the gem. Or you break your controller. Or both. Now I did eventually have other PS1 games, but for a year I almost played Crash non-stop, until one year later we got Crash Bandicoot 2 for 
Tech Strikes Back. Of the original trilogy, Crash 2 is my personal favourite, though I couldn't tell you why. Don't get me wrong, this is still a hard game, especially the Beehive Jetpack and 2 Piston levels and the bonus Polar level. It was here that we got gameplay features that have now become staples of the series. His skid, his crouch and crouch jump, his body slam and his victory dance. It was also here that we saw the roster of characters grow. From Engine, who had only been in a cutscene in the original game, to the Komodo Brothers and fan favourite, Tiny Tiger. And it's here we see Crash's sister Coco Bandicoot for the very first time. Like the first game, there is a lot of variety of levels to Crash 2, such as the woodland areas, river areas complete with a power board, sewer levels, ice levels, temple ruins, and a new riding section with Polo. Crash 2 also has some of the dirtiest and most devious hidden areas to get to secret levels and bonus routes that I've ever played in a Crash game. I mean, who would think to jump on these nitros? Unlike the first game, I did actually beat this one legitimately as a kid, which looking back on, I'm really surprised about given I was only 7. It was a lot of fun, and I still love this game, and even now it's making me smile with nostalgia. Literally one year later we got the fan favourite Crash Bandicoot Warped. I don't even know where to begin with this one. Like Crash 2, this game is split into 5 warp rooms, technically 6, and after 5 levels you face a boss. But there's a little something more to these boss battles. Each one gives you a new power, from a double jump, super body slam, super spin, sprint and a bazooka. That sprint comes in handy for a new feature that was added in warps that has been with the franchise ever since. Time trials. Like the normal levels, these can either be fun or control a smashingly impossible, especially if you're aiming for the platinum relics. Warped also includes some new bosses like Dingo Dial and Entrope. I love the name of the villains in this franchise, they're amazingly silly. And we see Aku Aku's evil brother Uka Uka for the first time. Once again there's a lot of variety to the levels, from medieval villages to underwater sections, Arabian night style levels to the future, and many more. We also got to play as Coco for the first time, charging along the Great Wall of China with Piora or surfing the waves on her jet ski. These levels are easily some of the faster paced levels in the entire game. I would also be remiss if I didn't mention his bike levels which were even used as the box art and was a cheeky little nod to Terminator 2. But Crash Warped also had some of the hardest levels, especially Area 51, Rings of Power and Hot Coco. Like I said, Crash 2 is my favourite original trilogy, but Warped is probably the one I've played the most. The following year we got Crash Team Racing, or CTR. The last game Naughty Dog made before they sold the IP and moved on to newer things. Like I previously said, Crash 2 is my favourite original trilogy, but CTR is my favourite Crash game overall, even to this day. I loved how it took existing levels and put a spin on them, like Cortex Castle, Tiger Arena, Engine Labs, Sewer Speedway and my personal favourite, Hot Air Skyway. This was also the first game where you could play someone besides Crash, and by that I mean choose to play. You could play as Coco in Warped, but you had no say in the matter, certain levels were just locked to her, but here you could play as her if you wanted, or you could play as any of the other characters, and there were 8 in total. I know that doesn't sound like a lot now, but back then it was, at least to me. Just because this is a kart racer doesn't mean it's any easier. In fact, this was the first Crash game to have a difficulty setting, and boy do you feel it. There was so much fun and chaos in this game, due in no small part thanks to the power-ups. From firing rockets, rolling bombs, planting TNTs and nitros, beakers and a lot of tracks have secret entrances and shortcuts to be found. One of the harder ones being on Sewer Speedway. CTR also introduced a new villain, Nitrous Oxide. Once again, love the name. I've always liked his design, and his reason for his plan is silly, and his track, Oxide Station, is a great track, and his boss race is infuriating, especially the second time round. This Crash game also had a ton of content, from time trials, CTR tokens, different types of cups and arenas you could unlock, and a battle mode that introduced a new thing to Crash that we hadn't seen before. Multiplayer, you could battle and race against your friends on any of the maps as well as other ones that were only specific to battle mode. After CTR, we got Crash Bash, developed by Eurocom, and the last Crash game we got on the PlayStation 1. If there's any game in the franchise I wish Activision would remake, it's this one. Imagine this with updated graphics, more game modes, 4 player co-op or versus, and this would be an even better party game. The game pits you against three opponents in the tournaments and cups, such as the pinball levels, pogo levels, crate smash levels, tank levels and a whole host of others. Not since the original game has Crash been so hard. In fact, I'll stick my neck out and say this might be the hardest Crash game until Crash 4 came along. What you need to do to beat Oxide the first time is bad enough, but the second time it's near enough impossible. 
In Adventure Mode, it's not as simple as collecting crystals and then fighting a boss. Later on, you need to have earned time trial relics and completed certain challenges to progress, and I have to confess again, I have never 100 percented this game either. I have never used cheats in Crash Bash, but there just comes a point where the game is beyond my gaming skills, and I just stop. I much prefer to play free play and try all the different characters and different levels, and it does have a really good replayability factor. Not that they feel too different from each other, but I still enjoy playing this game from time to time. Come on Activision, remake this, please. Next up we have the first entry on the PS2, The Wrath of Cortex. I actually got this Christmas that year, along with GTA 3. My parents never cared about violence in video games, and to this day, I've yet to murder anyone. I actually beat Wrath of Cortex Christmas Day, but there was a problem. We hadn't bought a memory card yet, and I didn't want to turn off the PlayStation. Eventually I did get a memory card, and I went through it all again. Unlike the other entries, the bosses of this game are elements, but Cortex is back, hence the name, along with a new villain, Crush Bandicoot, voiced by the always awesome Kevin Michael Richardson. The levels were a lot of fun, especially the jeep sections, hamster ball and water levels, and the mech suit straight out of Aliens. However, I loved this as a kid, but I find that looking back, I really don't like the look of the game. I can't put my finger on it, but it just looks unfinished to me. I even remember thinking something similar back then, but I persevered because I was a kid, and hey, more Crash. Also, I know this might be a nitpick, but I don't like the way Crash moves or jumps. It doesn't feel as responsive or as tight as it used to. After that, I stopped playing Crash. I mean, I was in high school, but it wasn't like I'd stopped being a gamer. Whether it was a subconscious decision because of the Rafa Cortex, or Crash somehow fell off my radar, I don't know. I still gamed and enjoy playing many games, like Hitman 2, GTA, Halo, Forza, many different Star Wars games, and a whole lot host of others, so maybe my taste just changed. Or maybe it was where Crash was going, and I didn't like it. Each new game seemed like a gimmick, from Twin Sanity to Mind Over Mutants, Crash of the Titans, and even a really odd redesign. Why does he have tattoos? He has fur, and why are they tribal? What tribe are you part of, Crash? And the redesigns weren't just limited to the Crash. What is with this design of Tiny? Why is he wearing army camo gear and why does he sound like a mix between Mike Tyson and Dredderick Tatum? <laughs> Crash, I really am cross with you. I'm just trying to do my job and you go and cause all this chaos. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to eat your face. Anyway, I kind of forgot about Crash except for the PS1 era games. That was until E3 2016. When the announcement and trailer for the Insane Trilogy was revealed, and that little kid in me went ballistic. And, on June 30th, 2017, I had another reason to get excited. We got a puppy. I'll throw some pictures up of her so you can awe at her at your leisure. Hard to tell which one I was more excited about, really. The Insane Trilogy was a glorious remaster that recaptured the highs and difficulties of the original trilogy. And they added a feature that made the original game a lot easier to access. Replayable bonus levels. No more quitting out and having to restart all over again just to get that coloured gem. Despite having a platinum trophy for all three games, I have always had one gripe with the trilogy, and that's the time trials. I had no problem with Warped having time trials because the game was clearly designed with them in mind. But Crash 1 and 2 were not, and it shows. The time trials stand out on those two because they weren't designed with trials in mind. Despite my minor complaints, like Skyrim and the original Mass Effect trilogy, this is a game I will replay at least once a year. Two years later, we got Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, which not only remastered CTR, but also combined it with Nitro Cat and boosted the roster to new heights. A special highlight for me is playing as Spyro or Baby Crash or Baby Coco, who are both so adorable. As well as many characters that were new to me, as well as a ton of new tracks I had never played before. I'm not going to get into the Activision microtransaction controversy because it'll turn into a rant, and this video will go way longer than I plan to. But I just, I hate it. I hate it so much. The in-game currency you get for playing the game, even if you try and do the weekly or daily challenges, compared to having to go to the store and buy them, oh, that's just bad. That's just real bad. That's my rant probably condensed down. On to the next thing. And then, last year, we got Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. I know this is a game that is just as loved as the original trilogy, but I personally didn't like it. There are features I did like, such as the different mass types with different abilities, such as phasing, reverse gravity and antimatter, and playing as Cortex, Dingo Dial and Tarnot is a lot of fun. Special shout out to the skins that can be unlocked via in-game challenges, rather than through microtransactions and loot boxes. Gaming companies, they can learn. Who knew? 
I also enjoyed the cutscenes and it made me want a Crash cartoon series so bad. And the boss battles were equally great and infuriating, especially that last one with Cortex, which will really test your thumbs to the limits and your hand-eye coordination. If you've ever beat that boss without dying, kudos. But, counter to everything I just said, I feel like the game threw too many features at you too fast. Now if you like or love this game, that's great, and I'm genuinely happy for you. I'm just giving you my opinion here, that's all. Next up, we have Crash Bandicoot on the run. Released to mobile on March 25th, 2021. It's okay for what it is, but... It's still a mobile game, so it has all the trappings you expect. Repetitive levels, limited gameplay, and a whole ton of in-game purchases. And that brings us to now. It's been a wild 25 years with some highs, some lows, some middles, and some Skylanders, but it's mostly been fun. Happy birthday, Crash. Here's to another 25 years. So I hope you enjoyed my little song journey through memory lane, so please hit the like button if you did, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. So there you are, that's my look back over the entire franchise of Crash and what it means to me. Now I want you guys to tell me what you think. Let me know in the comments below what Crash means to you, all the experiences you've had, good and bad. Do you love him, hate him, indifferent? Am I wrong about Rafa Cortex? Let me know all of it down below. My name's Craig, this has been Amalgam Ingle, and thanks for watching. Ingo's Diner is back and ready for you. Say good day to delectable dishes inspired by my interdimensional travels. Enjoy the breeze with our innovative three wall dining room design. Ingo's Diner, health and safety rated D for delicious. Warning, D is a failing sanitation brand and does not stand for delicious.